Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video I want to show you how to use a protractor to measure angles. And on my board I have three different protractors right now. And a protractor always has numbers here going up and down, and it is actually two sets of numbers going from 0 to 180. Here it goes starting from here 0 to 180 here, but then it also has another set of numbers, the inner set, from 0 here to 180 here. Then it has a baseline. In my big protractor, the baseline is here. And then somewhere it has a point where we need to line up the vertex of the angle, the origin, if you want to call it that. In my big protractor, it is here at the number 15, but it's not marked. And uh, the important thing in using a protractor is that we need to line up the side of the angle with the baseline of the protractor. We need to line up the vertex or the corner of the angle with the origin here. And then we need to remember to read the right set of numbers. Next we are going to look at the little protractors. In the top little protractor, the baseline or the zero line is right here. It goes to the number zero on this side, and on this side too. It is not the very bottom of the protractor, so one has to be careful to line up the side of the angle, not with the bottom of the protractor, but with this blue line. And then the origin where you line up the vertex is right there. And with this protractor, the baseline is here. And the origin is here. It is not, the baseline is not here. This is just the ruler part that you could use to measure things in centimeters. I will now measure these four angles with my big protractor. I will line up the baseline with the side of the angle, which is here. And I also have to put my origin, which is here at the number 15, to the vertex of the angle, like this. And then I will read the numbers here, where, where this other side of the angle uh, hits it. And there's two sets of numbers, like I said, one goes from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. The other one goes is 170, 160, 150. And so I use the set of numbers where 0 is for this line. 0 would be here, so 10, 20, 30, 40. This is 40 degrees. Now, an error that students might make is, is to line up this side of the angle with the baseline of the protractor. But this will not work because the angle is like opening like that and you need to have the protractor so that the other side will, will be here. Okay, here's a little one. And um, this time I will line up the baseline here with this side. But now I notice that, that my angle is under the protractor. If this happens, what you do is you continue the sides, especially this side now. Make it long. Just like that. And then try again. And here the zero is here, so I use the numbers 10, 20, 30, these outer numbers. It is almost 80. Uh, I would say 77 degrees. Oh, let's try it. The next angle. Uh, I could line up this side or this side, which is true every time I, I have two possibilities. Okay. Vertex is at 15. And now the zero is here. And so my angle opens up all the way here. And 0, 10, 20, I use the top numbers, which is it's between 130 and 140 degrees. Oh, it's about, it's 135. This is an obtuse angle. And the last angle here, it's kind of interesting. We are not actually measuring this part here, this angle, this acute angle. We are supposed to measure this angle here. It's called a reflex angle because it's more than 180 degrees. It is this angle here. If you start here, go all the way here. I cannot directly measure it with the protractor, but I can measure this acute angle here and then use subtraction. To measure the acute angle, 
line up this with the base, base side and like that. And then from here, you see it's always 40 degrees. This here is 40 degrees, but this one here is 360 minus 40 degrees. So this is actually 320.